Treasure News with Deep Digger Dan. Good evening. Today, hang on a minute. Good evening and welcome to the Metal Detecting News in association with MetalDetectingNews.com. Today, from time to time, I believe we all think about leaving something for our future. That's exactly what somebody did at this Masonic Lodge in America. It was the 17th of September when members of the Masonic Temple in Salem, USA, opened a time capsule discovered on their property. They didn't find gold, but they did find things considered valuable to their Masonic history. Handbooks, a Bible, coins and bottles were all found dating back to 1850. Unfortunately the items were wet, water damaged and the smelt of mould, but that hasn't dampened their spirits. The time capsule, a copper box, placed there in 1954, contained 16 coins including an Indian head penny and a Queen Victoria Canadian 20 cent piece. One mason was heard saying to his grandchild, you just witnessed something you'll probably never see again in the rest of your life. Back to you, Dan. The Treasure of Pirates. Now, this is one of the main reasons we all got into metal detecting in the first place. To find the treasure. Barry Clifford found just that. When I was a boy, my Uncle Bill told me a story about a sunken pirate ship. He said it was buried right out there. And I never forgot that story. When Barry Clifford found a shipwreck in 1984, right off Cape Cod, he actually detected the first documented pirate shipwreck. The Wydar, as the ship was called, was originally an English slave ship, later employed as the flagship of the pirate Black Sam Bellamy. In 1717, Bellamy died in a storm when the Wydar sunk, with all men on board except two, but the ship was also full of rich plunder. Since 1984, Clifford has found thousands of artefacts, amongst which are 10,000 coins. Now, there's believed to be over 400,000 coins upon the ship. Clifford gave two of these coins away, and one of them was sold for $11,400, so you can imagine how much this ship is worth. At the beginning of September, a diver brought back a bag as heavy as he could possibly lift, full of metal, and x-rays have revealed that it's full of masses of gold and coins. Get in. Most of us believe in love, believe in our women, trust our women, and listen to what they have to say. I don't, and this is the reason why. This is David Taylor from Belfast. His wife recently asked him to throw in the bin a piece of metal which he found in a field. She said it was probably just a bull's nose ring, but he thought there was something more to it, so he got in touch with the museum for a bit of advice. 18 months later, he's just had a report back from them saying that it's treasure. It's Viking treasure, 1,000 years old, and it's a bracelet. So I guess that the moral of this story is never... And I mean never listen to a woman. Back to you, Dan. I remember when I was 16 years old. I'd been out drinking the night before. The morning after I woke up, went out for a hair of the dog, was putting my shoes on, and I found a pound coin. A pound coin in my shoe. Now, I was so happy to find this. I'd obviously dropped it the night before. But can you imagine finding a shoe with hundreds of coins in from hundreds of years ago. That's exactly what happens in this clip. In Rotterdam, Holland, archaeologists were excavating a pit at a former council office when they found more than they bargained for. These wonderful clips show the actual unearthing of a shoe from 1592. The story didn't end there. 477 silver coins had been hidden inside the shoe. Now 1592 was a very turbulent time for Holland as they were in the middle of an 80 years war with Spain.
it's thought that the hoard was probably hidden to stop the enemy from getting their hands on it. Although mainly Dutch coins, there were also some from England and Spain, and it's estimated to be two months wages back in the day for a skilled craftsman. Now I have been known to find the odd World War II artefact in the past. Here is another one, found in an unknown location by an unknown metal detectorist, but very interesting all the same. It's not a tank though, it's not a tank. Here is a World War II soldier on a DKW Luxus 300 motorbike. Imagine the thrill of going out metal detecting and unearthing one of these machines and showing it daylight for the first time in 70 years. Most people can only dream of finding something like this and the detectorists who got lucky this time remain unknown, as does the location. Although it is likely that it's on the Eastern Front somewhere near the border with Russia. Congratulations on an amazing find. It's not a tank though, is it? Now most people go treasure hunting, look for treasure, but don't actually find any. On this rare occasion, this family from America actually went looking for treasure and they found it. Boy did they find it. Take a look. This is definitely the most successful find we've ever made. I went down and the whole bottom was covered in gold. There's gold, eight gold chains and all these gold coins, they're, they're laying all over the bottom. It was the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen. I'm happy as hell to find it and um, I don't care if I got 1% of it, man. I'm, I'm, I just, you know, it's finding it's 90% of it for me. This is definitely the most successful find we've ever made. They struck gold, lots of gold, off the coast of Fort Pierce over the holiday weekend. It was diver Dale Zeke that found the first piece of gold. Reaching to grab it, I saw another one about six inches away. I'm like, holy, it, there's two of them. Zeke and the Schmidt family found three pounds of thin gold chains, five gold coins, and a gold ring. The Schmidts have made their treasure hunting a family affair for the past 13 years, spending their weekends aboard their boat, R Booty, hoping to get lucky, but had only found a couple of coins until now. I went down and the whole bottom was covered in gold. There's gold, eight gold chains and all these gold coins, they're, they're laying all over the bottom. It was the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen. The family says the gold is more than 300 years old and came from a fleet of Spanish ships, most of them destroyed by a hurricane in 1715. As for who the gold belongs to, we're told the state of Florida will have first dibs, 20% worth. But I'm happy as hell to find it, and um, I don't care if I got 1% of it, man. I'm, I'm, I just, you know, it's finding it's 90% of it for me. All women like to wear gold. It's very expensive. Us men don't particularly like buying the gold, but we do like to find it. Here's Dan with a fantastic story about the find of a lifetime. This is the Mold Gold Cape, which was first discovered in 1833. It is one of the British Museum's most prized artefacts and was found with a skeleton in a burial site. The skeleton wasn't available for comment, so we caught up with Dr. Ben Roberts of the British Museum. The Mold Gold Cape is a kind of gold poncho and it would have been worn over the shoulders, so you would have put it on over your head and it would have gone down to about the middle area of your chest and it's made from a single sheet of gold, originally about the size of a golf ball, that was hammered incredibly flat into this poncho, and every part of the poncho has been individually ornamented with bosses, and so it almost looks like you've got wearing strings and strings of beads on your Now, chest. archaeologists are confident they have made more significant finds, which are now in the hands of the British Museum for proper examination. We now have a, a new story coming in from Israel, where I believe our reporter Deep Digger Dan is there. Hello, here I am in Israel and it's really hot and sunny, but they don't seem to sell ice creams. Anyway, a gold treasure trove has been discovered at the base of a temple mound and the archaeologists are pretty damn excited about it. I've never seen anything like this beautiful. Pretty amazing. Very exciting. This is the only third gold hoard to be found. This is, happens only once in a lifetime. The hoard is thought to be from around the 7th century, 
and contains gold and silver coins, a Torah scroll, and a 10 centimeter solid gold medallion emblazoned with a menorah. No, I don't know what they are either, but they do sound pretty expensive. We're going over to the weather now. Dan, how's the weather? It's really, really sunny! Um, okay Dan, thank you very much. If you'd like to know any more about any of these stories, or any future stories which may develop, please go to metaldetectingnews.com. My name's Deep Digger Dan, thank you for today, and goodbye. Treasure News with Deep Digger Dan.